I'm Troubleshoot and welcome to the most in-depth CS2 dedicated server tutorial to date. In this video, I'll show you how you can set up a completely free dedicated server for Counter-Strike 2 that stays on as long as your PC stays on. You can have pretty much as many friends join as you want, get custom maps working, etc, etc. This video will cover two methods, both Steam CMD and using your existing CS2 files. So even if you're trying to set up a dedicated server on a VPS or a computer over the internet, this video should show you exactly how to do so. Do check the description down below for timestamps and chapters, that way you can skip around to where you need to be. First of all, let's download the dedicated server files. As there currently isn't a separate dedicated server like there was for CSGO, this will probably be added in the future at some stage, we need to use the official CS2 files. What does this mean? Well, if you have CS2 currently installed, you can set up a vanilla CS2 server pretty much straight away. All we need to do is open up Steam, right click CS2, hover over manage and click browse local files. This will take us to where CS2 is installed. Currently, Steam Apps, Common, Counter-Strike, Global Offensive. Then we need to open the game folder. This is important. Followed by bin, win64, and in here we have cs2.exe. This is the normal game executable, but we can also get it to run a dedicated server with a few commands. We'll get there later on. For now, if you're setting this up on a dedicated server, or you'd like to keep your files separate from your actual game files, so you can modify things as you see fit, we're going to need to either make a copy of these files files, or preferably download a fresh copy of CS2 using something called Steam CMD. If you've ever set up a dedicated server on a VPS or another computer over the internet, you're probably already used to using this tool. Just a quick note, I'll be following a guide that I created, which you'll find linked in the description down below with all of the commands, etc. Simply heading across here and scrolling down, you'll find Steam CMD linked here and a direct link to the Steam CMD.zip file. Simply click here to download it for Windows, otherwise you can head across to the official Valve software website where you can find a download that suits you. For example, under Windows, we click the one here. I've just taken that link and put it here. It'll download a zip file that contains steamcmd.exe. This is the file we'll be using to download CS2's files. So I'll make a new folder on my desktop called maybe server and inside of it, I'll make another folder using Control Shift N or right click new folder and I'll call it steamcmd one word. We'll open up this folder and extract extract Steam CMD that we downloaded previously into here. You can then close and delete the zip file. Once you've extracted it, head back a folder, then right click new and choose text document. We'll rename everything, including .text with start.bat. As such, hit enter and confirm the change of file type. If you don't see .txt or the icon hasn't changed, at the very top, select view, followed by show and make sure file name extensions and hidden items are both ticked. On Windows 10, at the ribbon bar at the top, you'll find view and on the far right, you'll find show file extensions and hidden items. Make sure both of those are ticked. Now we can open up start.bat with any text editor, such as notepad. Inside of here, what we need to do is on the guide page, scroll down until you see this section here. Look for the Steam CMD section and copy this bit of text. We'll paste it in here and hit Control S to save. Don't close it just yet as we need to change a few things. First of all, for now, as there isn't a dedicated server, as in 740, we're using 730, the game's ID, in order to download the game files to host the server. This means that we can't use login anonymous like we did for CSGO servers. Instead, we need to enter a username and password of an actual Steam account. You can use your own Steam account here or create a new one for this purpose. Do note that this is the official Steam CMD file from Valve themselves, so it is safe. So we'll replace username with your username and password with your account password. I'll do this in just a moment. On top of this, this batch file also gets the server itself to start up straight away. In order to get our server to face the internet, we need to set a Steam account over here. For now, let's bring the users using their existing game files up to this point. In Steam, I'll right click CS2, manage and click browse local files. Then inside of here, we'll head to game followed by bin win64 and here is CS2. We'll make a new file in this folder to run our server. Right click new and choose text document. Highlight everything including .txt and we'll call it server.bat as such. 
hit enter, then yes when prompted, and now the icon should change and we can run our server using this file when we enter some code. If you weren't able to change it from a text file to a bat file, at the very top select view, followed by show, and make sure file name extensions and hidden items are both ticked. On Windows 10, at the top ribbon bar, you'll find a view tab, and over here on the right, you'll find show hidden files and file extensions. Make sure both of those are ticked. Right, so with our server.bat file, we'll select it, then right click and choose edit. You can also open it in any notepad or text editor. Then inside of here, we'll simply head across to the guide linked down below and scroll all the way down until we see creating server config and launch files. This second one over here is for people hosting the game using their existing CS2 files. So we'll copy this one and paste it into the bat file that we're editing. Just make sure to replace CS2 path with this folder path up here. So select everything, right click, copy and replace CS2 path as such with this full path to where the game is. Now we can save this and now both the users using their existing game files and those using steam.cmd are up to date. All we need to do now, we'll get a unique ID for our server and it'll be linked to our Steam account. Just keep in mind that when you create a dedicated server, it counts as logging in and running the game. So if you use your main account for this, you won't be able to play CS2 on that main account. Instead, you'll need another Steam account in order to do this. This should all be covered on the same guide if we scroll up a bit to server ID. First of all, we need to head across to manage game servers in Steam. Simply click this link here and it should open up a new tab where we're taken across to steamcommunity.com slash dev slash manage game servers. You also look something like this at the very bottom where it says app ID, simply enter 730 and for memo, you can call your server whatever you want. So for example, CS2 server, click create. And now we should have a unique code here in order to log in our server. So we'll copy this and for both users using the game files and those using Steam CMD to set up your server, you'll replace server ID as such with this unique token we just copied. So as such or as such, there we go. Those using the existing game files, once you've saved this file, you can pretty much run your server. All you need to do is double click server.bat and it should start running straight away. I made a small mistake. Instead, I moved the path up here and we just have cs2.exe here. When you copy it, it'll look a little bit different for you, but now you understand. Yours would have looked something like this when you began and we just copied the folder path and pasted it over here inside of double quotes. There we go. We can save it and at this point, you should be able to run your server by double clicking server.bat. A window will pop up. You can minimize this and our server is starting up right here. Just like that, you should be able to join it. For those hosting using Steam CMD, we still have a few more steps. We need to actually run this and download the game files in order to use it. So I'll replace my username and password, then I'll save it and close it. Okay, so running this batch file, it starts downloading Steam CMD. Then shortly after this is complete, it should then launch and log in. If for some reason you're getting stuck at logging in, or instead you'd like to make sure the server is manually downloaded, open Steam CMD at the very top here, click and type in CMD, then hit enter. Now we'll manually run the install command. So scrolling up, it'll be this one here. You can simply copy this, paste it and hit enter. Obviously, once you change username and password, just note if you get an error about your password, make sure you surround it in quotes. Then if you're asked for a two-factor code, either installing this manually or running the normal batch file, you'll need to type your Steam authentic a code and hit enter. Now CS2 should start downloading. Eventually when this completes, if you ran the normal bat file, it should try and start up your server. Otherwise, if you're manually downloading this, you can close the window when it's done. At this point, your server is downloaded and it should either be running or if you download it manually, you'll be able to run the batch file once more. It'll start up your server just like that. Sweet. At this point, you can join your server by opening up CS2 or we can do one final bit of customization through scrolling down a server.cfg file. Not only can we set a name for our server, but we can open it to the internet, change a few other commands to help performance, enable bunny hopping, for example, slow motion, I'll fix this number here, set a password, remote admin password, etc. I'll simply scroll down on the guide linked down below and copy this page here. Create a new server.config file. To do this, for Steam CMD users, open server, followed by game, CSGO, and then CFG. Inside of here, 
you can look for server.cfg as you likely already have one. Otherwise, create a new text document and rename it to be server.cfg. Open it up with any text editor and paste in the code we copied as such. If you're using your normal game files, instead from where we were over here, we'll navigate into Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Game, CSGO, CFG, and once again, either create a server.cfg file or open the existing one. Then again, paste in all the code found down below. We can save it, close it, and now, when we run our server, our server should now boot up once more, and this time, you should see scrolling up a section that looks like this. This confirms that we successfully loaded our server.cfg file. If you didn't for some reason, you can simply type exec space server, hit enter, and it'll run your server config once more. Now we successfully have our server running, let's go ahead and join it. There's two ways of getting to our server. First of all, play followed by the server browser icon, then OK, and inside of here, on the LAN tab, you should find your server listed here. You can click it and choose connect. Otherwise, open your console in-game, type in connect, space, 127.0.0.1, colon, 27015, hit enter. Now you should see your server console makes some noise and you're dropped into your server. Cool. Now, obviously, you're playing by yourself. How do we get other people to join us? Well, this is where it may get a little bit confusing if you've never hosted a server for yourself, say for Minecraft, etc. There's two things we need to do. Number one, handle our local firewall. And number two, handle port forwarding if you want people outside of your local network to connect. Just keep in mind, if you can't port forward, there are other options like Hamachi, Tunnel Me In, Cloudflare, No Trust, using things like NordVPN's MeshNet, etc, etc. There's tons of ways to get your friends to come and join you without needing to worry about port forwarding. But as port forwarding is technically the simplest thing to do, that's what we'll be doing here. So for now, out quit the game, close our server. You don't really need to do that. It's just good to do so as such. Now we'll allow our server through our local Windows firewall. If you're using a third party antivirus or something that comes with a firewall, you'll need to allow these ports through there. 27015 and 27016, both TCP and UDP. On the guide page once more, we'll scroll all the way down to this section here. This PowerShell section allows us to forward both of these ports for both TCP and UDP inbound and outbound. Simply click the copy button here and open up an administrative PowerShell window. Hit start and type in PowerShell, then run this as administrator as such and paste it in using control V, then enter and hit enter a few times just to make sure everything has run. At this point, we've now successfully allowed ports 27015 and 27016 through our firewall. You can confirm this by opening the Windows Firewall with Advanced Security, and inside of here, in the Inbound Rules section, you should find your CS2 server, and the same goes for Outbound Rules over here. Cool. Now, inside of a Terminal, Command Prompt, or PowerShell window, you can run IP config and hit enter, then look for the way that you're connected to the internet. For example, Ethernet adapter Ethernet, get your IPv4 address, and people can use this to connect to your server as long as it's running and as long as they're on the same local network as you, as in the same router that you're connected to. They can open their game consoles and run connect space followed by that IP, colon 27015, and they should be able to join. That's cool and all, but how do people over the internet join? Well, that's where things get a little bit more confusing scrolling down to port forwarding, we'll need to port forward. Over here, I have a text version of what you'll be doing, but I'll give you a visual demonstration now. Using an example router that I created just to guide you through what we'll be doing, you'll essentially log into your router, head across to the security and port forwarding section. But of course, as this is different for each and every individual router across thousands of different makes, models, and brands, you'll need to look up a guide for your specific router. When you eventually get to a page that looks something like this, you'll be entering the ports 27015 in both both the internal and external sections, if you have these, otherwise it'll just be one port section. And assuming you can't enter multiple or a range, you'll need to enter in 27016 in another option. But as I can enter a range in this example here, we'll port forward 15 and 16 as such. Then for protocol, we'll select TCP and UDP. But once again, assuming your router doesn't allow this, you'll need to do this for both TCP and UDP. Then local IP, you can see it's already filled 
filled in most of my local IP here. And using the IP config command I showed you earlier, we got 192.168.1.50. So we can type in .50 here, for example, and click add new. That's how to do it on my example router. And if you were to find this page out for yourself, it wouldn't actually do anything for you. You need to do this on your own local router. For that, you'll most likely need the admin password, which may be either written on the device or a default that you can find by Googling for your device and searching for how to port forward on it. That's pretty simple. And that's assuming you have only one router between your computer and the internet. For example, you're connected directly to the fiber box that's connected to the internet. Assuming there's multiple routers in between your computer and the internet, you'll need to port forward each device to the next along the chain all the way until it reaches your PC. So for example, I wouldn't fill in 1.50, I would fill in the next router in the chain's address along to my computer. Then log into that router and forward it to my computer or the next router, etc, etc. Things get a little bit confusing, but most of the time there's just one router between you and the internet, so this tutorial should be enough. If you need more information on port forwarding or multi-router port forwarding, you'll find guides linked in the description down below. Sweet. At this point, we've now successfully port forwarded our server, allowed it through our firewall, set up a server configuration file, and even an auto updater if you're using Steam CMD. All that's left at this point is to run your server and get some friends to join. It really is that simple. As long as you have your server running, other players will be able to join it. And of course, if you don't like finding your server.bat file every time you want to run your server, instead hold alt and drag the server.bat file onto your desktop in order to create a shortcut to it. Then you can simply name it, say CS2 server, and every time you double click it, it'll start up your server as you remember. Pretty cool. So heading back to the server browser as such, we should be able to find our server and join it. Sweet. You can play as usual, get your friends to join, etc. It's yours to do what you please. Obviously, in the future, when source mod and meta mod come around working, KZ, Bhop, and Surf Maps will come back with multiplayer servers, timers, etc., which is something I'm really looking forward to. At this current point, meta mod and source mod don't work for servers, so I won't be able to show you how to install them and set them up just yet. I'll have videos covering that pretty much as soon as they come out in the future. It is something I'm very interested in. And of course, if there's any other server mods, settings, and things like that you'd like me to cover, do let me know in the comments down below, as I'll be more than happy to cover them. And that pretty much concludes the most in-depth CS2 dedicated server setup guide. If this helps you out, I'm glad. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.